22 year old Jorge Soler makes his debut batting fifth and playing right field for the Cubs tonight in Cincinnati. American ballpark for Chicago Cubs baseball here on Comcast Sportsnet. Nice night for baseball here in Cincy. It's hot. The Cubs are hot, looking for their fifth consecutive win. Great to have you with us, Jim Deshays and Len Casper. So Jorge Soler is here, half the so-called core four now in the big leagues. Yeah, we got uh, John and George. We need Paul and Ringo. It's Solaire having a monster year. He felt, uh, battled through some hamstring issues earlier in the year, so he hasn't had a lot of games played in his career. Just 151 ball games, but glittering numbers: 307 average, 28 home runs. His OPS this year actually higher than Chris Bryant. Just 22 years of age, out of Havana, Cuba. The Cubs signed him in 2012 to a nine-year, 30 million dollar deal. Cubs are three and a half games behind the reeling Reds for fourth place in the division. The reason the Cubs have played so well lately, mainly due to their pitching. Yeah, boy, you know, it's not like they're tearing the cover off the ball. They've won a lot of 2 1, 3 1, 4 1, those types of games. 3 0 here last night. Last 11 ball games, the Cubs playing good baseball, 7 and 4 with a 2.51 ERA. The starting pitching has been really good. The bullpen has been outstanding for a prolonged period of time now. And tip of the cap to Travis Wood. He got his first win last night with six shut out innings since the middle of June and it'll be Jacob Turner making his first start as a Cub tonight here in Cincinnati Anthony Rizzo day to day with lower back stiffness well this has been the site of a lot of Cub Major League debuts several of them already this year we will see another coming up next.
Car Buy, your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. AT&T U-verse. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. Ford. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. And by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Another hot one here in Cincinnati. But we've got some sunlight and blue skies above, and that's a, a good thing. We had a 50-minute rain delay, 14 pitches into the game last night. Cubs would go on to take game one. They've won four in a row. They've got the longest active winning streak in the major leagues. And the Reds now will take the field behind right-hander Matt Latos. He's going out there, but nobody's coming with him. There they come. So let's check out the Cubs Southwest starting lineup. That will face Latos. Chris Coughlin in the leadoff spot. Javier Baez had a rough night at the plate last night. Now under 200 on the year. Castro is going to hit third with Rizzo day to day. Valbuena in the cleanup spot. Soler, the eighth Cub to make his major league debut this season half have come here in Cincinnati Castillo the catcher out contra of the two game home run streak the former red Chris Baleka is at first Jacob Turner bats night. That's defense brought to you by Kia they have committed the fewest errors in major league baseball this year it's Schumacher gets the starting assignment in left field tonight that's been a bit of a revolving door Hamilton and Bruce every day in center and right for the Reds when healthy. Different look on the infield. Negron gets a start at third today. Cozart, Gold Glove candidate at short. Brandon Phillips, he's made just one error all year at second. Todd Frazier, he's been getting frequent starts at first base since Joey Votto went on the DL. Devin Mezzarocco is the catcher and the Lexus starting pitcher for the Reds. Is the big tall right-hander Matt Latos. Just a bunch of time on the DL earlier this year. He had arm issues and then a knee problem. 13 starts. Good numbers, four and three, with a 2.99 earned run average. We'll set the umpires for you. Chad Fairchild is back of the plate. Ben May, minor league ump, is working this series. He's at first. Mike Everett is at second, and the crew chief Bill Miller is over at third. Some roster moves today. Uh, Solaire recalled along with infielder Logan Watkins from Triple A Iowa. Watkins actually went to Tacoma. And played uh, Monday and Tuesday before getting called back here. And two outfielders go to the disabled list Justin Ruggiano with left ankle inflammation, and Ryan Sweeney with uh, left hamstring strain. He got hurt last night. And again, uh, we're not sure about Rizzo, but it does not sound very serious. Hopefully, he'll be right back in the lineup tomorrow afternoon. And if tonight's Cubs leadoff man gets a hit, Benny's Beverage Depot will donate $100 to JDRF. Chris Coughlin will lead it off. Latos, 6 and 2 in his career against the Cubs with a 266. 6 6, 245, and a four seamer for a strike. Yeah, he'll throw two and a four seam fastball. He'll also cut his fastball. Slider, change up, and a curve. Velocity's down a little bit this year. I don't know if that's due to the injury problems earlier. This is only his 14th start. Last five starts. 2 and 0 with a 248. Bounces in front of the dish. Another hot one. 86 degrees.
Excellent numbers for Coglin here in Cincinnati as he waits on a 2 1. Fouled off. Plato's had right elbow surgery last October and then had uh, left knee surgery in mid February, suffered the knee injury working out in spring training. He came back in mid June. Bounced foul. Still two and two. Yeah, big guys, 6'6, 245. Presents uh, some tough angles for a hitter. Really gets on top of the ball and drives it down to the bottom of the strike zone effectively. Working from the first base side of the rubber. One fouled off. Coglin doing a nice job here as the leadoff hitter, forcing Latos to throw some pitches. That could become an issue on a hot night like tonight. Back again on a 2 2, and that ball rolled into center, benefiting. JDRF courtesy Benny's Beverage Depot and Chris Coglin. And Coglin had such a good July, really had cooled off lately, hitting a, just a buck 91 over the last couple of weeks. But a great at bat there. Worked the count, saw some pitches, and ultimately won the battle. JDRF and Benny's were big fans of uh, Emilio Bonifacio, but he got traded. And uh, Chris Coglin now picking up the slack. Felt like. Uh, Emilio let off every game in April with a hit, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, he was, <laughs> was automatic there for a while. So, regroup time for Baez after an 0 for 4, four strikeout night last night. The fourth time he has fanned four times in a game, and the third time he's had four at bats, four strikeouts in a contest. Ground ball. They're going to get two. Five to four to three, starting with McGrone at third. Talking about strikeouts, and ironically, yeah, yeah. he makes two outs by putting a ball in play. I know. I know. That's... Sometimes life just isn't, isn't fair. Hang with him, kid. 21 you're in the big leagues the future is bright. Castro moves up a spot. He actually hit third the first two games of the season in Pittsburgh did it again on August 7th. For the most part this season he's batted in the cleanup spot last night returned from the bereavement list and went two for four. And he chops one slowly to third charged by Negron. And the inning is quickly over. Bottom of the first, Reds coming up, nothing, nothing.
Last in the majors in team batting average, their Southwest starting lineup. Hamilton, the all-star Frazier playing first again tonight. Brandon Phillips at second. Mezzarocco, his uh, first appearance in this series. Big numbers this year against the Cubs. Bruce and right, Negron at third. Skip Schumacher in for Ryan Ludwig. Zach Cozart, the shortstop, bats eighth, and Latos ninth. And Kia presents the Cubs defensively. Coglin Alcantara, Solaire left center right. Balbuena Castro buys the lake at third to first. Wellington Castillo behind the plate. Our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Jacob Turner. Young right hander acquired from the Florida Marlins. He's worked just a couple of times in relief for the Cubs. This will be his first start here, his 13th on the year. Four and seven, 577 ERA. Overall for Turner, just 23 years of age. Good heater, slider, curveball, and a change. Here's Billy Hamilton. Turner's last start with Miami came against these Reds. August 3rd, and he gave up five runs in four innings. Strike one on Hamilton. Turner is the 11th pitcher to make a start for the Cubs this season. Two strikes. Yeah, he worked uh, two and a third innings in relief on August 14th for the Cubs, and then five days later worked uh, two innings in relief against the Giants. Then went out to the bullpen and did some throwing to get stretched out a little bit, but I would guess probably no more than 75 pitches for him here tonight. He's in because Edwin Jackson is on the disabled list. This last night, the Cubs tonight have five guys in their lineup. Well, I say guys, kids who were all born in the decade of the 90s. And Turner is one of them. And Baez, oh, that ball, I think, hit the heel of his glove. He was probably not going to get Hamilton anyway. If Hamilton hits a ground ball, JD, and an infielder has to move very much to get it, he's probably going to beat it. Yeah, unless it's taking you the other way closer to first base where you just catch it and flip it. But yeah, ranging towards the middle of the diamond against Hamilton, and he just takes you out of your rhythm, too. He forces you to do things more quickly than you normally would. Talked a little bit about Hamilton last night. And you know his, his on base percentage way below what you would want in a leadoff hitter but he, when he does get on the stolen bases and the distractions that he provides I don't there's no way to quantify that there's no stat for you know the distraction factor but he, he just really makes it tough for a pitcher especially on the, you know right, right out of the gate in the first thing when he gets on base you're trying to get settled in there he goes Strike call, throw to second, he's out. Castillo gets Hamilton, who was bidding for number 50 on the year. Well, if you recall earlier this year, Wellington Castillo got off to a real tough start in terms of throwing out base runners. They were 20 out of 21 against him or something like that, but he has improved markedly since then. Hamilton has now been nabbed 19 times. Turner a little giddy up on that heater tonight. So Hamilton's stolen base percentage is not really that great. No, it's not. So even though he's got 49 steals, he's been caught too many times. Wellington came into this one with a caught stealing percentage of 25%, which is just below league average, Frazier. given where he started. Frazier strikes out. Yeah, and I would say the struggles early were probably more of an outlier or a surprise than the right. success yeah. here lately. Yeah, because he's just known for him having a real good arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, you know, one, the, the pitchers obviously. If they don't get the ball to him in a quick enough fashion, he's going to have no chance. 
in Turner's two relief outings for the Cubs, I don't know that we've seen 95 96 from him. There's 95. So, yeah, feeling strong tonight. What's the Chicago song? Feeling stronger every day? I was thinking of the Rocky song. Well, Turner cruising through the. What's the Rocky song? You know, feeling strong now. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Solaire's coming up. <laughs> second. <laughs> Decade celebration is presented by Bank of America. Make sure to visit WrigleyField100.com for all the planned festivities. The Brewers and Pirates are in town. Cubs.com for tickets. A lot of Cub fans here in Cincinnati. Luis Valbuena in the cleanup spot, batting ahead of Mr. Soler. We'll get his first career plate appearance here after Valbuena. Going to fly now. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's what Valbuena hopes uh, this pitch does. Decided to take it. Cubs with a couple of homers last night. They have been very reliant on the home run ball, as we have chronicled here lately. They've homered in each of the last 10. How about each of the last 11 games? Gonna fly now. <laughs> one nothing. Strike up the band. Ooh, that was a big one. Number 13 for Valbuena. A no doubter. What are you doing? Taking the spotlight from the kid coming up, Luis. Yeah, well, we can give him a fist bump on the way by and say, that's how you do it, kid. Move your forward home run replay out in front of that one. Lift and separate and jog. So here's Soler. Do some quick high fives, and then everybody will be at the top step. 22 years old. Camera phones at the ready. The only thing that has kind of uh, been an issue for him has been staying healthy for long stretches. You mentioned some hamstring injuries. But when he has been healthy, he's been terrific. 
Signed a nine year contract with the Cubs in 2012. Born in Havana, Cuba. That's a strike two and one. Defected in 2011, established residency in Haiti. And a left shin fracture that ended his 2013 season in mid June. And he powers this one out in the deep center. Back to the wall. Gone. Welcome to the show, Jorge Soler. <laughs> That's how you make a first impression right there. Wow. Massive home run. The last Cub to do that in his first Major League Plate appearance was the guy in front of him, Castro. And it was here in Cincinnati in 2010. They go back to back to start the second. Uh, there's a little life in that bat. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, he showed some Ooh. patience. He laid off the breaking ball early in the sequence, gets a ball up in the zone. And powers it straight away center field where the big boys go. Mm. Sounded good. Castillo now aboard. Three straight hits to start the inning. Soler was 11 out of his last 20 down at the Iowa with three home runs. So he was hot there and continues here. Zaranko trying to settle Latos down a little bit. Valbuena 417 feet. Soler 423. This will be the only pun I use, and we're not going to do this anymore. Would you say Soler eclipsed Valbuena? I would say, yeah, okay. I think he did. That's the only one. Here's Alcantara. He's homered in two straight. And I know you asked him the same question I did. The home run he hit last night was on a pitch way out of the strike zone, up. But it was a hit and run. He said he would not have swung at it. Had it not been a hit and run. Yeah, it was, it was an automatic high. swing. And he hit it out of the ballpark. Yeah, it was so high that it's sometimes you see a guy not even not, you know, the hit and run will be on and they won't pull the trigger on a ball because it's so far out of the zone, even though they're supposed to swing, and he just went up on his toes and whacked it out of the ballpark. Swing and a miss, and Alcantara strikes out. That's out number one, and strikeout number one of the ball game for Latos. You know, these young Cub prospects. You know, there's going to be ups and downs along the way, growing pains for sure. They have so much upside and there's so much power there. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch this group come together. Even if they're when they're scuffling, you know, they're going to hit a lot of balls out of the ballpark. Baleka sends one out. In the right center, and it's run down by Hamilton for the out. Yeah, you, you've brought this up before. There, there are some who believe Solaire might end up being kind of the cream of the crop in a stocked system. And in a lot of way, cases, I, I feel like he hasn't been talked about as much as some of the other guys. And, and part of that reason is he hasn't been healthy. He's right. played. So, yeah. So. Basically, one full season right. over you, the last two and a half, three. Yeah, so he has, doesn't have those 
eye-popping counting stats, you know, the home runs and the RBIs that would go along with playing for a full season. But when you look at the rate stats, the on-base plus slugging, the batting average, um, like I said in, in the open, he, he actually has a higher OPS this year than Chris Bryant. Both of them, you know, elite level up over a thousand. One and one on Turner, who has now a two nothing lead to work with early. If I were a soon to be free agent pitcher, I'd make sure my agent checked in with the Cubs. I might want to pitch for that club. Might be some run support there. Gotten up underneath the mask a little bit on Mezzarocco. Chest protector up onto the chin. Got beat up pretty good in that series in Chicago last time the Reds were in town, if I recall. Yeah, he hit some home runs. Yeah, he, but did, he, did he got some bruised damage. and battered behind the plate. And didn't he get hit by a couple pitches too? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think, think he had a. He got a swing, follow through the bat, whacked him. He got hit by pitches. And balls in the dirt came up and bit him. Yeah, so it was uh, June 23rd. Two hit by pitches, two walks, and then a grand slam. The old one for one for RBI night. Turner swings and misses, and the inning is over. But what an inning it was. Valbuena led it off with a towering shot. And that was just the opening act. Then the Stones took the stage. Two nothing. A shin fracture that ended his 2013 season in mid June. And he powers this one out in the deep center. Back to the wall. Gone. Welcome to the show, Jorge Soler. <laughs> First impression right there. Wow. Massive home run. So two nothing Cubs. Long and strong. Boy, that was fun to watch. And the sound, the crack of the bat, boy. Huh? It was fun to listen to.
Rangers all-star Devin Mezzarocco. You mentioned last night the Reds with five all-star representatives. But none of them this year named Votto, Bruce, or Phillips. Right, so every reason to believe that the Reds would go on a heck of a tear if they could have kept their club healthy. They did not. Votto's been out a good long while now. Bruce had knee surgery. He's playing. He came back fairly quickly from that knee surgery, but he has been not productive. And Mezzarocco, I think, just maybe showing some signs of the wear and tear of all the the work he's done behind the plate. You know, it's tough to be a catcher in this business. You get beat up all summer long. Broken bat flare down the line. Mezzarocco making a big turn. He's going to hold with a single. He's been in a pretty good funk here over the last couple weeks plus. He's one out of his last 31 prior to that swing. Bruce, the right fielder. Four years ago today, hit three homers against the Cubs. Most recent player to do so versus the Cubs of the last 11 to three homer performances. Against the Chicago Cubs, six have been Reds. Jay Bruce at one time was uh, he was kind of like the Jorge Soler of the Reds organization one of the top prospects in all of baseball came to the big leagues at the age of 21. Too high. And it's one and one. Saw his home run totals climb in each of his first five years in the big leagues from 21 to 22 to 25 to 32 topped out at 34 a couple of seasons ago went deep 30 times last year drove in a career high 109. Just missed the outside corner and it's two and one Turner from St. Louis will not get a chance to pitch against his hometown Cardinals this weekend. Nor will Adam Wainwright get to face the Cubs. He pitched today and suffered the loss 3 1 Pirates, the final. Turner gets pretty good run on his uh, fastball. Uh, the thing he has to remind himself to do is to stay on top and get run and sink and fly open as a right handed pitcher. That ball is going to flatten out, run away from the left handed hitter, but tough to keep it on the outside corner. Westminster Christian Academy in St. Louis is where he pitched his high school ball. First round pick in 2009 of the Tigers, number nine overall. Count on Bruce. Close, but he took it for ball four, and the Reds have something brewing here in the second. Two on, nobody out. Negron, the third baseman. Turner has a sign from Castillo. Here's a pitch. Negron shows bunt takes a strike.
Reds have only had one winning month. They went 18 and 10 in June. They've been terrific against everybody in this division except for the Cardinals. 10 1 and 1 in all series not involving the Cardinals inside the division, and they are winless in four sets against St. Louis. In the air to right, Solaire just on the edge of the warning track. There's Zarocco tagging. He's now at third. They're at the corners with one out. Right now, the Reds kind of holding off the Cubs, who are just three and a half games behind them for fourth. Reds a game and a half out at the All Star break. 12 and 25 since then. They've actually pitched pretty well, but they just haven't been able to score runs. Turner. The number's not good this year. 109 hits in 82 and two thirds innings. Batting average against quite high. Both right hand, left handed hitters. But the stuff is really good. Marlins targeted him when they made the deal to send Anibal Sanchez to the uh, Tigers. Running a very high ground ball rate that would serve him well right here. One hopper to second base would work just fine. Schumacher does hit a lot of ground balls. One and one on the veteran Schumacher. The pitch fouled out of play. Happy uh, belated birthday wishes to Heather Stengel. Transplanted to Chicago and lives in Cincinnati. And was at the ball game last night. Is her nickname Casey? I don't know. It's a good question. Wants to think it over. Was committed to the pitch. I'm not so sure I want to go with that. Let's think it over and regroup here. Maybe I'll hit my hybrid instead. Line to deep left. Coglin can't make the play. Mezzarocco scores. Bruce is going to be held at third. It's a double for Schumacher. Showing some opposite field extra base power. It's now two to one. Uh, good smart hitting by the, the veteran Schumacher there. They're trying to get him to roll over on a two seam fastball. Uh, they tried it a couple times. You see Castillo slide to the outside corner. And he, so he doesn't try to pull that pitch. Uses his legs. Go down. Goes down and lifts that ball. With authority. Over Coughlin's head out there and left. Good stroke. Stay inside the ball. Get it airborne was his strategy. And it pays off. Cozart it's ground ball to short Castro will throw to first Bruce is in we're tied at two Cozart gets his 34th RBI Cozart has not brought much to the table offensively for the Reds this year he's Arguably been the best defensive shortstop in the National League. And every little bit he can provide at the bottom of the order, they really appreciate. He comes through there, getting one home with the infield back. Latos was Schumacher at second, two runs in. And low on a heater. 
Jorge Soler with a home run in his first major league plate appearance. Tell you what, Cub fans may want to circle the trips to Cincinnati on their calendar next year. All these debuts coming here. Latos bounces out, and the Reds have come back to tie it. After two, tied at two. In Cincinnati, the Cubs are proud to salute the men and women of the United States Armed Forces and will honor them with a special ceremony. Part of the game on Monday, September 1st, with the Brewers. Fans who purchase tickets through the Cubs special events page will receive a special commemorative coin. Tickets are only available through Cubs.com slash special events. 120 ball game up to Labor Day. First place Brewers in town for three, and then the uh, Pirates over the weekend. Cubs back to work offensively, and it'll be the second time through the order for Matt Litos. Well, Javier Baez made headlines on August 5th. That was this month, 22 days ago, off Boone Logan in the 12th inning at Colorado, and that was a game winner. Major League debut. Coglin single to start the ball game. <laughs> Strike on Chris. Deep breath by Latos, the South Florida native, former San Diego Padre. One and one. Drilled out toward Hamilton. He dives and he caught it. Diving grab by Billy Hamilton. Coughlin's uh, bid for a second base hit tonight. He dies in the glove of Billy Hamilton. That's a high risk play. You leave your feet. If that ball gets by, it's three bases for Coughlin. Sometimes you got to be willing to take a chance. Baez now get into a double play in the first. Breaking 
ball bounced foul. I don't know how the question was phrased to you, but I know you joined the uh, cap on the pregame talking about the face of the Cubs franchise. Has chased a bad one. Strike three. And heading back to the dugout. Now called out. Zarocco was waiting to see if he had to tag him. He did change that rule a couple years ago, I believe. Once you basically give up the at bat and head back to your dugout, the umpire yes. will call you out. Make no attempt to get to first base. You're out. Yeah, and then, you know. Cap's point being that you know all these youngsters coming up. Anthony Rizzo has you know, clearly solidified his place in the game as one of the the better young hitters in all of Major League Baseball. Yeah, I mean he's he's kind of the the focal point. I mean there's so much attention on all these young guys. But, you know, Rizzo's kind of in the even though he's still a young player, he's he's kind of in that been there, done that category. He's gone through the growing pains. He's had the ups and downs, and now he's pretty well established. Along with Starlin, and they both have the, the long contracts. I guess when I look at what is being built here, I don't know if they're going to have a quote face of the franchise, and I think that might be a good thing. Yeah, that's just something. You have a lot of about, different right guys. Right about. Yeah. I think the face of the franchise is just a, a, you know a, a young face <laughs> because that's the theme. Right. <laughs> Are you of the? The mindset that they might have to bring in a a Reed Johnson type, somebody who has been in the big leagues for you know ten to twelve years, doesn't have to be an everyday player, but someone who could be that leader in the clubhouse. Castro strikes out. Let me ruminate on that, and yes. we'll discuss next half inning. Sounds good. Interesting. Uh, Ricky over there talking to Baez, probably saying, "Look, can't give give up on that play. You got to run down to first, even if you're out." Two two. Wrap up their three gamer with the Indians at U.S. Cellular Field, seven o'clock for the airtime, right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Actually, the timing of the the, the bias strikeout, he didn't run the first and appeared to maybe sulk a little bit. And we had a shot of the manager uh, talking with him. And as Hamilton bunts, foul. Kind of leads into the question I was asking you. Is there a value in having a player be the guy to be the one to talk to him and not having it always be the manager or a coach to talk to a 21 year old kid? Yeah, and, and um, yes, I think there is value to it. Um, I think that value can be overstated sometimes. Um, 
people are always asking questions about you know leadership and chemistry and things of that nature. I think it's important, but I think it's probably overplayed. Um, and it, for me, it doesn't have to come from a veteran, a guy who's been around the league a long time. Uh, it can come from a, a you know if there's a young player. I think it's Justin Pedroia right. became it, that player at yeah. a very young age. Uh, if you play the game hard and you understand the game and you play the right way, you can get credibility in a big league clubhouse in fairly short order. If you go out there and you, you play every day uh, like a man on a mission, um, people are going to kind of look up to you. Um, so, yeah, there's value in, in signing, and I think that this young club going forward could use a guy or two like that in the clubhouse. Hamilton is out. Let's play Castillo to get him. He was fun to watch play, boy. He put so much pressure on the defense. A little misstep, bobble, inability to grab this ball quickly, and he's on first base. But Castillo does everything just right. So, well, he threw him out trying to steal second, and now makes a nice play on the bunt. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of with you, and I do think that it, it's a bit easy to say, well, you got to have leadership. Uh, but when you do talk to people inside a clubhouse, there, there is a premium that is put on players being able to police themselves. Managers would rather have players tell other players those little things they need to do and not be nagged all the time by uh, by the boss. And right? that's what and that's what Ricky is trying to do with, with Rizzo and Castro. I think he's trying to get those guys to be those guys. Um, we talked about it last night with Starlin not going hard down the line when he had a little flare in center field. You know, you have to play the game a certain way to have that kind of credibility in the clubhouse. Um, or it falls back to the manager and the coaching staff. So if you've got a four, you know, a manager and a staff with, a, you know, with the right personalities, they can do it. But, but I'm with you, and I'm, I I'm agree with Ricky. If, if you're the manager, you prefer to have some guys on your club um, that can handle it as well. And you know, ideally what you want is for everybody to kind of be on the same page where the players are are getting after each other. Uh, hey, dude, what are you thinking there? Why, why aren't you running? Uh, why didn't you back up third? Just, you know, it, it doesn't have to be any kind of a lengthy conversation. It doesn't have to be, you know, a confessional where you, you beat the guy down. It's just, you know, constantly reminding each other of the proper way to approach the game. One strike on Phillips. Frazier at first, bottom three, two, two. Frazier looked like he wanted to run. He was runnerish. He was runnerish, and he's been runnerish this year. He's stolen 17 bases, been caught six times. It's kind of funky how he takes his lead. Points more directly towards second base. Seems like he'd have a hard time getting back quickly, doesn't it? Apparently not. Well, right now it looks like he's getting that max lead, knowing that Turner's going to throw. Drive to left. Coughlin on the warning track has room to make the play. Frazier back to first. Zaraka one for 32 going into tonight, but a single and a run in the second inning in his first at bat. Well, it was what Hannigan and Hernandez for a while, then it was Hannigan and Mazzarocco, and now it's pretty much Mazzarocco and little Brian Pena.
and Mezzarocco kid coming up through their system they always felt would be a very productive hitter at the big league level it took them a little while to get there and a lot of times it takes catchers a little bit longer and there's so much on their plate when they first come to the big leagues the entire right side of the infield is wide open. We've got Vallejo holding Frazier at first and everybody else over on the other side of second. So you don't have to look up any sort of spray charts or any sort of website as you watch the game tonight. You would just know based on what the Cubs are doing right now that Devin Mazzarocco gets the ball on the ground to the right side very infrequently. Doesn't mean he won't in this at bat. Cubs yeah, are not expecting him to. It's easier to play this way with two outs too because you're not giving up as much. You know, with one out, if he shoots a base hit through the hole on the right side, Frazier goes first to third, and that becomes a sack fly opportunity or maybe an infield in situation. But with two outs, even if Frazier goes you know, first to third, it's not that big of an advantage over uh, him being in scoring position at second base. Continues to be a lot of debate in the game about shifting. I've talked to a lot of scouts that have been around a long time, old school guys, they just don't buy it. <laughs> Understand it. The key will be can hitters make the adjustment or should they make an adjustment? Should Mezzarocco be willing to sacrifice power to try to steer one through the hole on the right side with a man on first and two outs? Probably not. Be looking to drive the ball. Yeah, in some ways it's it's like a football defense. It's like third and eight, and we'll give you the six yards, yeah. but then we're gonna close the gap. Yeah. Putting an extra man in the box or whatever the terminology yeah. is, the nickel. Ball four. And the other part of it too is it's just you know there's some hitters in the game that are so good with the bat that they're able to kind of direct the ball around the diamond. But those guys you don't play strong shift for anyway because of that skill set. Other guys like Mezzarocco, a pull hitter. If you ask him to try to hit the ball the other way, change his swing plane a little bit. Just, you know, get lazy pop ups. Bruce with two on. See Jay Bruce fifth all time now for home runs by left handed hitting red. One oh from Turner and the breaking ball misses. Hitters count now for Bruce. To Turner who stabs it and gets the out at first. Single, a walk, no runs. Must see viewing Jorge Soler. Major League debut. He homered in his first plate appearance. What will happen in his second? Come back with us and see in the fourth.
using hashtag Northside fan photo for a chance to have it appear in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Well, Valbuena, Soler, Castillo. Last time they started an inning, home run, home run, single. Here's a pitch, it's low, ball one. Missed again, two and oh. Buena took him deep last time. Latos a little hesitant to challenge him this time. Well, that fastball outer third down around the knees keeps missing. <laughs> Buena has been in a good spot here in the last week or so, swinging it well. Lead off walk. Here comes Soler. Speed action. Two one fastball belt high crushed. This one's popped up on the infield. See what Phillips did. See him take a little uh, peek. He wanted to know if Soler was running. And he was. Because if he didn't run, Phillips could have let the ball drop and try to turn two. Not many guys would try that play, but Phillips might. Dirt blocked by Mezzarocco. Latos in uh, the second year of a two year deal he has one more year of arbitration eligibility will become a free agent after next year. He's only 26 years old. Given the resume what he's accomplished already in his age he, you know, he profiles as the kind of guy you'd like to lock up long term but the Reds have got so much money committed. Going forward. A lot of their other guys uh, they might not be able to make that kind of commitment with Latos. Sure, but Mezzarocco might be running out of timeouts. Remember Bailey? They've He's signed got a, a long-term deal. He's got 120 left. He's got a 20. Yeah. There goes Valbuena. He got a pretty good jump. Here's a throw. Safe. Went in head first, got in ahead of the tag. 
That is his first stolen base. Yeah, you don't think of Albuena as a base dealer. They toast a big long right hander. They must have liked the times they had on his delivery home. Been a while, April of last year. His previous steal. So he's at second. He's risk averse. Very discerning on his stolen base attempts. Swing and a miss, strike three. Two outs. Contra strikeout victim first time up went after breaking ball down. Coach will tell a guy, hey, you like to hit the fastball, then look for fastball. You get two strikes on you, then you have to be willing to make a compromise. But until that point, look, look for your pitch in your zone and try to do damage. Where you get into trouble if you start trying to guess along, you try to react from one at bat to the next. I've been struggling with that off speed pitch down. He got me with it last time. So if you focus on that, then you can't pull the trigger on that one good fastball you get to hit. Deep center, Hamilton makes the play. Well, Contra has some sneaky power. That ball just kept on carrying a long out to end the inning. 2 2. Budweiser bleachers now during uh, the Wednesday September 3rd game versus the Brewers purchase your special Budweiser bleacher tickets to the special events page to redeem an exclusive limited edition Cubs glass mug tickets are only available through Cubs.com slash special events. Uh, I got some tweets on the uh, the Phillips play and wondering well what about the infield fly rule uh, you have to have runners on first and second or the base is loaded. <laughs> Or the infield fly rule to take effect and fewer than two outs. It was a runner at first. It's not enough. The infield fly rule. But good question. There's no such thing as a bad question. I would agree with that. They always tell you that in school. And every now and then you run into a teacher that says, well, that was a stupid question. The 
Negron fouls away. One and one. Here it is. Hit hard and passed Castro and Negron is going to make second as Alcantara overran the ball. It's a double. Great hustle out of the box by Negron. Knew that ball was headed towards the gap. Knew uh, Alcantara would have to travel a ways to get it, so he's looking two out of the box. The ball that it looked like Castro might have had a chance to knock down if he left his feet. Negron ends up with a double. Great hustle. That ball really well struck. Contra trying to backhand it has his feet slip out from underneath him. But even if he stays up, he's going to give himself a hustle double. Schumacher with an RBI double in the second. Ball one. Schumacher plays all three outfield spots, second base. And in a blowout, he can pitch. He's done it four times in his career. Ground ball, base hit. Here comes Negron, and he scores, and it's 3 2 Reds. Schumacher having a big night. Down near the bottom of the Reds batting order, double single, two driven in, and it looked to me like he was definitely trying to exploit that hole between third and short. Castro shading up the middle. Schumacher guides this one through the hole. To the 5-5 uh, five, five hole. Here's Cozart. Turner came into the start with 55 strikeouts in 82 and two-thirds innings, so a strikeout rate well below league average, despite having plus stuff. So you know he's a young guy. Came to the big leagues at the age of 20, back in 2011. Deep left, Coglin on the warning track. They get Cozart, Schumacher back to first. That's out number one. It may just take a while. We talk about these hitters having to make adjustments. It may just take a while for Turner to, to kind of figure things out as he goes along in the big leagues. Pitch sequencing and how to set up hitters. Maybe make an adjustment in terms of you know, how often he uses his fastball versus his breaking ball. Stuff is clearly there. Turner acquired from the Marlins on August 8th. For two minor league pitchers, Jose Arias, Tyler Bramer. And he was the youngest Tiger to make his big league debut at age 20. And since Bruce Robbins, who was 19 years old when he debuted in 1979. Latos, one of the more vociferous gum chewers in the big leagues. I'd have to put Darwin Barney on that list. Clint Hurdle would be the manager of that team. Yeah, he's the all, all, all gum chewing squad skipper for sure. See Felix Dubrant on Saturday make his Cup debut as Latos bunts. Turner will pick it up. Doesn't even look at second. Gets the out at first. Baez covering.
Hamilton with a bunt single caught stealing in the first. Not a bunt in the first rather he was thrown out in the third. He made that diving catch as well in center. Sitting in pretty good shape in terms of the National League Rookie of the Year race. You uh, rattle off a few names, but yeah, I don't I think, think it's his to lose yeah. right now. Yeah. Earlier in the year, there was you know, some buzz about uh, the Owings kid out in Arizona. Jacob DeGrom, who's been pretty good. 17 starts, a 313 ERA for the Mets. Yeah, you know, Hamilton has the advantage of being in the lineup every single day. He's been out there all year long. He's leading the league in stolen bases. Well, second to D. Gordon, leading all rookies in stolen bases. Remember Scott Williamson? I do. Pitched uh, uh, throwing right hander. He was the last red to, to win the Rookie of the Year award. That came in 1999. Scott Williamson. Pitched for the Cubs. 2005 and part of 06. Is due up second in the fifth inning. He's at 62 pitches. He might have another inning left in the tank, depending on how hard he has to work to get out of this fourth. Go, 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 go. Better hurry. Castro can't make the play, and they're going to get a run. Hamilton thought about two, but he's going to hold it first. That ball was hit off the end of the bat, had all kinds of crazy spin on it. Castro knew. He didn't have much time, but he not only didn't make the play, could not keep it out of the outfield. Yeah, not an easy chance because of the funky action on the ball, but the priority here should have been just to make sure it stays in the infield. Go, 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 go. Again, with Hamilton going down the line, the chances that you throw him out are not great. I'm trying to make a play on that ball and throw out Hamilton at first base, but the main focus should have been knocking it down and making sure Schumacher didn't score but that that's that's just funky there side spin on that ball an error on Castro no RBI for Hamilton and this one had trouble all over I don't even think it got his glove I think it missed the glove completely he got a little something he hit his glover's leg got a little piece of something Misfortune for Turner. He's not had a clean one, two, three inning yet. Faced the minimum in the first because of the caught stealing of Hamilton. You know, just deflected off his lower leg. It's something Phil Mickelson would have hit. Well, Hamilton caught in the first inning. I have a feeling he's going to try it again. Now down two runs. I have a feeling Turner will be lifted for a pinch hitter. Being the wave is now up. Yeah, he's worked hard here. It's a very hot night. At least two base runners in every inning.
By the way, uh, I think that should have been a hit. Yeah. You could claim that yeah. he could have stopped it maybe, to, you know, right. kept the run from scoring, but I don't think he was going to get Hamilton, and that ball clearly took a right turn. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 I think that's a really yes. tough error yes. on Castro. Yes, I do too. I mean, I think it was an error in that he didn't knock the ball down, but in terms of Hamilton at first base, I think that should be a base hit. So there's the question. Could an official score give a hit and an error on that play? <laughs> I've never seen it done. I think infield hit, you you hit, infield hit Hamilton. To, you have to give him run scores on the air because he didn't yeah. knock it down, but it'd be tough to do. Yeah. That would be next level official scoring. Hamilton runs, Frazier bounces to third. That one booted by Valbuena. Over the last 23 ball games prior to tonight, the Cubs have committed just six errors at a 993 fielding percentage. Over that 23 game span, that was tops in the major leagues. Again, not an easy place coming hard with a lot of momentum. Frazier runs pretty well, but play should have been made. So E6, E5. Night over for Turner. Here comes Renteria. He's making the call, and I don't believe there's any sort of double switch involved. So Turner's night comes to an end here in the fourth inning. With the Reds leading the Cubs 4-2, to two, Carlos Villanueva, when we come back. Carlos, uh, five and six now with a 4.76 ERA, much better out of the bullpen than he was as a starting pitcher earlier this year. Last time out a week ago against the Giants, three and a third, allowed one run. Uh, Brandon Phillips, due up here, is just three out of 27 in his career against Carlos Villanueva. Turner uh, laboring a little bit there in the fourth. Certainly didn't get any help from his uh, infielders. Two run spread already. Renteria figures can't afford to make a mistake here to Phillips and have him knock one out of the ballpark. He likes the matchup with the numbers that Carlos has against him. So he pulled the trigger. Hamilton. 
Hamilton and Frazier both on due to errors by Cubs infielders. Fast ball at 89 for a strike. Is this fair to say? Carlos Villanueva hasn't always been good when he's pitched, but when he is good, he's really fun to watch. Yeah, he's uh, very clever out there. Yep. A starter, five outings, 1053, as a reliever, 31 appearances at 242. So this year, this has been a much better role for him. 31 appearances and over 48 innings. He's been, I don't know how many long guys really exist anymore. You don't see guys go four, five, six innings out of the bullpen, no. but yeah, two or three. That qualifies these days. Ever think we would call the long guy a two inning, two -inning guy? guy? Yeah, it's more like he's the bridge guy. Hamilton takes off for third, and he just picked up his 50th stolen base. To do that in a single season. And they just put that up on the scoreboard. It's one of those, it's good if it works. It's not a high percentage baseball play to steal third base with two outs, but Hamilton with his speed yeah, makes it way more than most. Bob Besher, Dode Paskert. Bobby Tolan, Joe Morgan, Dave Collins, Eric Davis, Barry Larkin, and Deion Sanders. 50 steel seasons. And a few with multiple 50 steel campaigns. Pitch, Phillips takes it high. Phillips just missed 33 games recently at surgery to repair torn ligament in his thumb which he injured on July 9th in a diving defensive play. Back waggle. As he rolls one foul. Well, this is an explosion for the Reds, the way they've been going lately to have four on the board in the fourth inning. Two runner going, base hit, center field. Frazier continues to third. Five to two. Now, despite the good matchup numbers this time, Phillips wins the battle against Villanueva. So, yes, ultimately, the stolen base is third, really didn't play into it. Didn't want to have scored either way. That ball squared up. 
Really well struck. Mezzarocco, the eighth red to bat in the inning. will trot home. Phillips to third, six to two. Well, might have been able to put four infielders over there on the left side, and Mesoraco still probably would have found a hole. Yeah, it, despite uh, having all those guys in the box, he still got the first down. Third time he's been on tonight. Two singles and a walk. So all of a sudden, the floodgates have opened, and those two errors really haunting the Cubs now. Five games prior to tonight, the Reds have been shut out twice and scored one run twice. AT&T U versus Multiview. I don't believe hitting is contagious, but it certainly looks that way tonight. More contagious when you get into the bullpen in the fourth inning than when you get into the bullpen in the eighth inning. Just doesn't seem to be a lot of legs in Bruce's swing. Upper body, all arm swing right now. Strike three called. So the Reds finally done here in the fourth. They do bat around. It's six to two. Reds lead the Cubs uh, Cub six to two now. Saturday it's a Cubs Cards doubleheader in St. Louis. Tune in as the Cubs look to spoil the Cards holiday weekend. Coverage starts at 12:30 with Cubs pregame live. Cubs Cardinals Saturday at 12:30 on Comcast Sportsnet.
have been blue in the stands tonight. Sultry evening here in the Queen City and the Cubs with work to do down four, but they've got plenty of time. Former Red Chris Valeka will lead it off. So all six runs charged to Turner, three were earned. Fastball command for Latos early on was a little spotty, he was missing up in the zone. And after that second inning, doing a much better job getting the ball down around the knees. He will elevate the fastball intentionally from time to time up above the hands. Curveball has been a nice pitch for him tonight. Valeka held its one and one. The extra bullpen arm you know, allows Ricky to get a struggling starter a little earlier than normal. Uh, but with Rizzo day to day with the back, already a short bench, what it does create is you, know, you don't double switch, being a wave has got a hit here in the fifth inning. You got Baker Watkins Caesar available. You don't want to burn too many guys too early in a ball game. No, you don't, you don't give up the ship when you're down four, but you save your resources and you want to make sure you utilize them at a good time. You have an opportunity later in the game with a couple of men on base where you want a favorable matchup. The other thought when he came into the game, uh, Villanueva was, well, if Valeka gets on, then I can ask Carlos to bunt. Three and two the count on Valeka. He has made starts at all four infield spots. This is his ninth start overall with the Cubs. Ground ball in the hole. Kozart. The throw will be late as Valeka has an infield knock. That's how good Kozart is. He's upset he didn't make this play. So much momentum carrying him towards the third base line. Tough to get a lot on the throw going back across his body. Gary Jones just told me in a wave of show bunt, pull it back, hit a two run homer. Could have told him that. Or just lay down a bunt. Yeah, just lay down a perfect sacrifice bunt. Coughlin has singled and then robbed of a hit on a diving grab by Hamilton in his second at bat. Jake Arietta will pitch for the Cubs tomorrow against Dylan Axelrod. Then we go to St. Louis, four games in three days this weekend. Ball one. Very good arms in the Reds outfield in center with Hamilton and right with Bruce. They each have eight outfield assists this year. Puts them among the league leaders in the National League. Hamilton, the former shortstop, has been a pretty quick study out there in center.
The Coughlin take is rather unique, isn't it? Well, he kind of leans back every time he takes a pitch. Did you just come up with a new baseball term, the Coughlin, the Coughlin take? take. Kids all, all around Chicago are going to be doing that. Hey, that's the Coglin take right there. I recognize that. So mindful of those big arms in the outfield. Important that Valeka gets a nice jump here and score on a base hit. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Relevant. Six one for Leto. She's got a lot of swings and misses at the breaking ball down in the zone. Or out of the zone, I guess I should say. Chase breaking ball. Well, he's tatted up, isn't he? Yes, he is. Well, if he's quite at uh, the point, there was it Justin Miller who was forced to wear. An under right, right, right. So it was deemed yeah. distracting to the hitter. Swing and a miss by Baez. Double play ball and a strikeout. 0 for 2. The old head tattoo. <laughs> oh. My, uh, JD, I'm telling you. That'd be a good look for you. Still playing. Was, was that a tattoo? Not hair he had going right. on the head? Right. See, I didn't you, notice you were, that. I thought he had hair going. You were fooled. Wow. Might have to think about it. Yeah. It was a cricket pitch. So I'm going to see how far this kid is willing to expand the zone. The old 55 footer spiked fastball. I wonder if that was a changeup. Oh, choking that ball in maybe his hand. Down to get it. Sends a high fly to deep center. Where Hamilton is there. Two hands on it to end the inning. All Reds tonight leading six to two in the fifth.
So now open at Water Tower Place. The museum combines high tech interactive experiences with an impressive collection of game used treasures. Come challenge your friends or just yourself. Negron has started the four run fourth with a double. Swings through a fastball here. Negron uh, drafted by the Red Sox in 06. Swings through a breaking ball. 0 and 2. Yankees put up eight in the third at Detroit. Now eight to one. In the bottom of the fourth. Ooh, David Price got lit up tonight. Two innings, 12 hits, eight runs, all earned. Texas pummeled the Mariners today, 12 to four. Rubned Odor with a grand slam. Rangers took two of three in that series. Two two pitch on the ground backhanded play. Baleka down to a knee. The Inueva over safe. He could not beat Negron to the bag. It's a hit. Ricky Renteria working his way out of the Cubs dugout, looking back over his shoulder. Buy a little time as they take a look, and we'll take a look. Negron and being the wave in a foot race. Out. Out. He'll challenge it, and he'll win it. First look was a little better. Yeah. He'll challenge. A little bit behind Carlos, but he's able to recover in time. Well, I'm glad I didn't mark my scorebook. Well, that's a good look right there. Should not take more than. I'm, I'm going to say the over under here is 36 seconds. When are they starting? Right now? Start the clock. Tonight. Right now. On Headphone, 60 minutes. Headphones off. Play overruled. Now, boom, done. Tie goes to the runner, Negron said. No, there's no such thing in the book. Uh, you should have taken the under. I don't think it even took 36 or 7 seconds or whatever. I. Good challenge, Skipper. Billy Hatcher, the first base coach, trying to influence the call. I've never seen a first base coach call a guy out there. They'll always call him safe. I would pay dearly to see that, though. I'd love to see a first base coach ring up his own guy. Uh, 44 seconds. So I guess they started the clock before we officially, we unofficially did. I gotta tell you, it felt like about 32 yeah, seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Ends up getting old. Time flies, it really does. Schumacher bounces. That is a fair ball, Valeka.
Cozart with two outs. And the pitch is high. Ball one. We do have uh, updated uh, replay stats through Sunday. The average time of a review is actually under two minutes. One driven out toward the alley. Alcantara gets over there. Cozart kept to a single. Get back to those numbers here. So uh, confirmed plays. That means yes, we absolutely got it right. Play stands. That means whatever we called on the field stands. We can't. Uh, there's not enough there to confirm or to overturn. Play overturned 46.4 percent of the time. Record keeping. I don't know what that means. That's like the oh, uh, just whether it's turning balls and strikes, yeah. that kind of thing. Two and two or three and two, that kind mm. of thing. So I, I don't even know what the what the standard or the bar was when we started this thing in terms of the goal or whatever when you challenge. Did you expect it to be more than 50 percent? I had no expectation. Yeah I didn't either so I, I don't know what to make of that. I guess we need a few years in before we're able to maybe better analyze it. So if you challenge a call based on those numbers there's a about a 54 percent chance you will be unsuccessful in that challenge. I guess it means the umpires generally are doing yeah. their jobs. Well, and, and you know I think too that you know managers sometimes challenge calls even though they probably think that the umpire got it right because it's late in the game it's a you know, big situation and kind of that nothing to lose challenge. Yeah that, that's a good point. Strike three call to get Latos. Still six to two Reds as we go to the sixth. Two, the 30th annual Cubs convention will take place at the Sheridan Chicago Hotel and Towers on January 16th, 17th, and 18th. Room blocks are now open, can be reserved by visiting CubsConvention.com or by calling 1 800 325 3535. Be sure to ask for the Cubs convention rate. All reservations come with convention passes built into the hotel package. 
Well, Jorge Soler with a home run in his first career plate Another appearance. Two, two. Starlin Castro the air, deep right field. Back did it back Bruce. in 2010. Back that ball is gone. All right. Oh, my gosh. How about that? The 3-2 to Castro. Left center. He's going to knock in at least two more. Soto coming in. Castro on his way to third. A three-run triple. Record-setting night here in Cincinnati. Six RBIs in his debut. Fastball from Latos for a strike. So far tonight, Starlin 0 for 2, rolled over on a curveball, ground ball to third, and then struck out swinging in the third. Got a piece of his yeah. right foot. Swing and a miss, strike three. Would have been the split. Up. Boy. Bottom fell out. Mm -hmm. yeah, right over the top. Gives you that fastball from that angle, and the off speed pitch looks the same coming out of the hand, just never gets the home plate. A little shorter stride, maybe, than you would anticipate for a guy so tall, but I think that's what allows him to. To get on top and use his leverage and get that angle going downhill towards home plate. Easy play for Schumacher. Lentos took a pretty good uh, shot to the jaw back in the second inning. Not literally, metaphorically. Back to back home runs and a line drive single by Castillo. His pitches looked pretty flat. And you know, well, this could be a short night for Latos, but he has settled in nicely and taken charge of this ball game. Solaire with a homer his first time up. He popped to second in the fourth. Well, Derek Lee kind of with that stance, that front foot. Curve ball. Low for ball one. Why do we do it in our game? I, I'm as guilty as everybody. Uh, everybody looks like somebody else. Yeah. Well, he. Reminds you of. Mm -hmm. He reminds me of Big Ed Delahanty. Two and oh. This looks like he has a calmness about him in his at bat, too. Very comfortable. Looks like he's able to slow the game down. Be a rush to judgment. This is his third major league plate appearance. So there's that look about him. It's a 2 1 fastball that he hit it out of here for his uh, home run, his first time up. That was in the second. It's a perfectly placed breaking ball there with the 2 1 offering. You didn't want that one anyway, Jorge. And I don't think he thought it was a strike either by that reaction.
Here it comes. Three and two. John Heyman at CBSSports.com has a very interesting article, the title of which is Cubs having best year ever for a team that's 59 and 72 and ensconced in last place. Talking about the development of all these young prospects and the, the bounce back year Castro's having, the year Rizzo's having. He strikes out. They used ensconced in a headline. Yes. Bonus points, six to two, Cincinnati. Sportsnet Central presented by GMC sights and sounds for today's Jackie Robinson West parade and the rally post game reaction from the Cubs on the debut of Jorge Soler all that and more on Sportsnet Central tonight only on Comcast Sportsnet. Well the good. Albuena and Soler. Home runs tonight back to back. The bad. The Reds have scored the last six runs. Batted around in the fourth, scored four runs in that inning on four hits. There were a couple errors. Uh, hey, JD. Yeah. Uh, they have changed. Hamilton's last at bat from an error on Castro to a hit, and they have given Starlin an error, allowing the run to score. How about that? It's next level scoring. They got it right. So I think they did get it right. I don't think they're going to throw out Billy Hamilton and catching that ball cleanly was a challenge with all the funky spin it had on him. The errors charge because he wasn't able to keep it in front and the runner you see passing in front of him there going from second to third was able to score. Swing and a miss strike three. Yeah that's good. I, I like that. I like that call. Has calmed things down. Not a single in the fifth, but that was it. Now he starts the sixth with a strikeout of Hamilton. Cubs with nine outs to play with. Reds bullpen kind of been struggling lately. Every now and then Carlos just comes flying off that rubber. 
times he'll throw the change up in there kind of jump at the hitter and throw the change up. Too close to Frazier that time one and won the count. I'm guessing he would make a very good major league pitching coach. Yeah, that's a good call. Swing and a miss. But he wants to keep pitching at the big league level for a while yet. And also, it might be a guy who would find himself working for the Players Association someday. Smart guy, bilingual, relates to all the players. He's been actively involved. 91, but looked like 95. Frazier a little late. Good elevation there. Down goes Frazier. Had to say it, but I can only say it half heartedly. Phillips with an RBI single his last time up. The Yankees had nine consecutive hits in that ball game off David Price tonight. You know why? Why? Because hitting is contagious. Yes, there it is. Spencer Patterson uh, tweeted that earlier. But, uh, the Yankees being very contagious tonight. Phillips with a long walk to gather his thoughts here. On the hands, and he was able to fight it off foul. Carlos, who's in charge of the rookie uh, trip with all the funky uh, outfits, and he mm -hmm. said, Who do you think? John Baker. So they're going to wait until September. The roster expands. And uh, as you can imagine, John was very happy to talk to me about some of the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Just kind of working it out right now. I think the veterans will have something fun up their sleeves. Sneak attack. Phillips. I think thought he hit the ball, but he didn't. Swing and a miss for strike three. So Villanueva fans the side, and that'll take us to the seventh. Six to two, Reds.
Wrigley Field from the Budweiser Bleacher Suite. The Bleacher Suite features a sports bar atmosphere, TVs, high top tables, a one of a kind Wrigley Field experience. The suite can hold up to 100, includes food, drinks, and parking. For more information, visit cubs.com slash suites. Look, see how much fun they're having? They're having a blast in there. Well, four straight strikeouts now for Villanueva. Struck out the side in the sixth. Yeah, reaching back for a little something extra on the fastball. I love the fact that Phillips argued that he hit that ball. He missed it by about a foot. Yeah, well, let's see how close he was here. Yeah. Seventy two. It's about as slow a pitch as Latos will throw. There's QG Fujikawa up in the bullpen. Fouled off. One and two. Ned Yost kind of getting on the fans in Kansas City to uh, support the team a little bit more. Alex Gordon with a game ending home run last night. Only 13,847 were there to watch it. Yeah, I read a column today on that. It's one of those battles you're probably better off not picking. Yeah. I, mean, I, I get it. You want people to come out and support your club. It's usually a losing proposition because. However, it comes off. It comes off like you're criticizing the fans. Yeah. Nine strikeouts now for Latos. Been really good tonight. So today tried to clarify and said he was not being critical. He was simply asking them. To Come on to, out. Yes. This is fun and entertaining. You should be a part of it. Negron will get our counter two outs. Yeah I read his comments after the game last night. And I didn't think they were all that controversial. But again I think anytime you kind of take the fans to task uh, for not showing up. Then, you know, I think the one thing they said that probably got a lot of people worked up is that we, he said something along the lines of we've been building for this for three or four years. And if you're a longtime Kansas City fan, you've been waiting for a winning three baseball decades. team for a oh, long yeah. time. Yeah. They don't want to hear this three or four year thing. The other thing is it was after the game, right? So I'm sure. Most comments by major league managers and players that make headlines and get talked about and force people to clarify the next day are after a game. When they're a bit emotional and maybe mentally yeah, worn out. Usually so, after a tough loss, not a thrilling win. Yeah, so I, I I'll give them a break on that.
the Lee Ilya tirade comes to mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody's got a breaking point. Double digits for Latos. Reds lead six to two. Celebration of Wrigley Field's 100th season. We've got to MasterCard, a partner to offer a limited number of MasterCard Century seats for every game during the 2014 regular season. Fans can use their MasterCard to purchase upper deck box tickets for $19.14. For more information or to make your purchase, visit Cubs.com slash Century Seats. News and notes, Madison Bumgarner had a perfect game uh, in the eighth inning last night until J.D. turned on the television in his hotel room and said, hey, yeah. a perfect game. Yeah, I jinxed him from 2,000 miles away. And then it ended. Andrew McCutcheon back in the lineup today. Yadier Molina possibly could be back with the Cardinals this weekend. So Bumgarner was so good last night. We're going to show you the one. Bad sequence he had. Yeah, the luckiest yeah, hitter, well, Justin well, Morneau, well, got him. Went down and got a breaking ball, and there goes the perfecto. Well, it looked like Bumgarner didn't have anything last night. He did strike out the next three batters, yeah. but we're not going to show that. Here's QG Fuji Cowell. pitch. QG uh, has worked uh, five times, five and a third innings. Not working with any regularity. The bullpen has been so good, and Cubs have had a fair number of leads lately. Ricky Renteria is pretty comfortable with the work he's getting uh, you know, from Ramirez, Strope, and Rondon late. Justin Grimm has been really good lately. So Rocco gets hit again by a Cubs pitcher. You see, unintentional, but <laughs> love his reaction. Yes, doesn't no, look at the screen at anybody. Just, and I just it's right down to first. No, no menacing looks. Just gonna take his base. Ouch! Third gonna time. leave a mark. Third time he's been hit by a, a cub this year. Didn't mean to. Look at that. A little pitching wedge. Bruce put one on the green about two feet from the cup. Yeah, he, he took uh, took a little more club. It just won't easy. I was just thinking here. 
Watch just a little soft block of this pitch. Sometimes you're good, sometimes you're lucky. This time, Bruce, a bit of good fortune for him, and Fujikawa's got first and second, nobody out. Fastball too high. Hit batter in a single, and the Reds have two on with no outs. Pitch got a little more giddy up on his fastball last time he pitched, that time got it up to 92. There was a cutter, a curve. His best secondary pitch is his split finger pitch. It's a cutter. Might have been a cross up. Swing and a miss. Jikawa with a 2 2 and fouled away. The girl born in New Jersey grew up in California. Went to college in Sacramento at C O S U M N E S River College. The Sumneys? Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Yeah. Consomme? I would say, cause, yeah. <laughs> like soup or something. Well, send us a tweet uh, at Jim DeShays or at Len Casper. C O S U M N E S, River Community College. How do you say it? No clue. Here's Schumacher. I was pointed to a Joe Posnanski blog post about Ned Yost's comments, and as always, Joe really spot on with his analysis. And he went back to earlier in his writing career when he ripped some fans for not showing up and realized how wrong he was for what he wrote. He said, uh, Quote, when 13,000 or so fans showed up for the Royals game Tuesday, that was what the Royals had wrought. They had not engaged more fans. They had not played well enough to draw a bigger crowd. They had a schedule. They had to schedule a game on a Tuesday night after school started. The fans have no responsibility here. The fans are the whole point of the game. You want more fans? Lower ticket prices. Try being a bit more active in the community. Basically put it all on the Royals. You want more fans? Go get a job in a bigger market. Make the game more interesting. Don't play on Tuesday nights. <laughs> These things might work, they might not, but the point is that to think of fans as anything other than the defining purpose of all this is to misunderstand the game. Yeah. Yeah, his point is about books and movies, that the bestseller lists and the, the biggest grossing movies are the ones that are purchased and attended the most. 
is that people can say, well, it's dumb that this movie's number one, but they never say the list is dumb because it's a factual thing. Right. <laughs> people consume it. So his point is, if only 13,000 showed up, it's because that's what you deserved. Whether you like it or not. And I'm, I'm kind of with him on that. Man, I well, hate telling people this, how to spend their money. Uh, uh, well, the other interesting thing, too, is, you know, Ned made the point that, you know, we need big crowds because we feed off the energy and that's going to help us win. Well, they just won a dramatic game, you know, a game winning home 13, run in front 000. of those 13,000 people. They didn't need a packed house to pull that off. He also referenced the Braves in, I guess, uh, 91. Poznanski went back and pointed out there were back to back nights in September and they drew 12,000, 15,000. Sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. A bouncer to second. Baez dropped it, throw to first, late. It has not been a good night for the Cubs infield. And nobody. Really has been immune except for Vallejo over there at first. Well, Baez has got big plans. He's going to get this ball, apply the tag, and then throw the ball to first base. And it all comes unraveling on him when he, in his haste, can't secure the baseball. You see he's got it in the heel of his glove. Then he tries to make the transfer to his throwing hand. Doesn't do that cleanly. It'll be an error. Got to get an out somewhere, so the bases are loaded with one away, and it'll bring up Cozart. Good pitch, just missed down and away, but a good try. You know, I'll add another thing to this. You'll never hear a manager say, like Monday night when Derek Jeter played his last game in Kansas City at least in the regular season where they have 37,000 you'll never hear Ned Yost go I don't know why that many people showed up for one player <laughs> so the ticket sold kind of meets the demand of the night or the day yeah and, and I'll tell I, you I suspect you know if they're they, going to draw if well down keep playing, yeah if they keep playing well they maintain this lead and they're right in down to the final days with Detroit they'll some big crowds. Try this again. Five, four, three. Inning over. We go to the eighth. It's getting late. The Cubs are trailing by four. Lead. Visit the Cubs Authentics auction page for your chance to bid on 
one-of-a-kind game-used Cubs items. This week's auction features the 1994 Cubs throwback uniforms worn on uh, Sunday, July 24th. Go to Cubs.com slash Authentics to bid on these jerseys and other unique game-used items. Actually, that was back uh, just in this last homestand, actually, the 31st of August. Her high is 13 in terms of strikeouts for Latos. Got 10 tonight. That's a season high. Previous season uh, high this year was seven. See a lot of swings and misses at the breaking ball. That time he climbed the ladder with a heater on Castillo. But mostly uh, breaking balls down. Put away pitch for Latos here tonight. Seven innings, five hits, two runs. Both earned one walk, ten strikeouts. And he works here in the eighth. Logan Watkins will bat for Fujikawa. I don't know how much sleep Logan has gotten here lately because he had to fly to the West Coast to join AAA Iowa. He left Sunday night or Monday afternoon. And Starlin Castro came off the bereavement list, played two games with Iowa, and then had to fly back here. A hardship you're willing to endure to come back to the oh, big leagues. Man, yes. Yep. But he's pretty much slept the entire flight in heading this way. There's Zach Roscoe, the left hander. Serves that one out in the center for a base hit. I'll tell you, Logan Watkins has looked like a different guy in a very small sample size than the guy we saw when he made his big league debut. Yeah, and you see that a lot. Guys first come to the big leagues and they're, they're a little uh, odd by it all. Deer in the headlights kind of thing going on, and then they sit, get sent down. They, and the next time they get that chance, they come up with more of a, I'm going to attack this game. I'm going to show everybody what I can do. And then you just get that sense watching him play that that's his mindset now. Bob Bowen says it's Kosumi's. Kosumi's. Thanks, Bob. Bob, many, many thanks. Kosumi's River Community College. It's right out there by the Kosumi's River, I bet. If uh, you're into such things, Plato's probably should give up one more run at least tonight. Well, exactly one more run. His last six starts, alternatively, he's given him 3 1, 3 1, 3 1. So he's due for a three. Jonathan Broxton getting ready. Broxton and Chapman, their eighth and ninth inning guys. Bouncer pulled foul. There's a glove, young man. But also hit that device down there that we're sick of seeing rolled onto the field. It's called the tarpaulin. Yeah, the Reds have had there. They've had 21 rain delays themselves. What an eight? Rain delays Eight. between these two clubs between these two teams this year. Boy, Latos has been awfully efficient for a guy with as many strikeouts as he has. Still under 100 pitches working in the eighth with 10 strikeouts. I think Coglin is, is taking it out on the tarp. He's just hitting ball after ball at the tarp. I've seen enough of you the last couple of weeks.
Pitch number 100 from Latos is high. There's a little uh, Josh Colmenter comp, right? With Latos. The over the top action. Yeah. Yeah, I mean he's definitely more high three quarters than most. Not quite as severe as Cole Mentor. Cole Mentor kind of stands alone. He's almost left-handed. So over the top yeah. he is. Had fun with a big group of. Uh, Cubs front office employees who made a bus trip to Cincinnati saw the Cubs beat the Reds. Road tripping. At least for a night. Three and two with nobody out. And off the end of the bat line drive base hit the Cubs now have two on with no outs. Coughlin swung it well tonight. Two hits could have had a third. Hamilton made a diving catch on him to take away a base hit back in the third inning. It's going to do it for Latos. He was really, really good, but the Cubs with a fighting chance. Down four, a couple of men on base, nobody out. And then the two, three, four coming up here. We'll be back in a moment. Roxton has uh, done a very nice job for the Reds this year. The league hitting just 166 against him. Now 136 ERA is the third best in the National League, sixth best in the major leagues among all pitchers with at least 49 appearances. Picked up the save on Sunday, five to three win over Atlanta. Baez a batter. Two on, nobody out. We're in the eighth. Here we go. Strike one. Relies heavily on his slider. Two seam fastball with good action inside on the right handed hitters. Sometimes a giddy up on that heater that he used to have.
Wider than wide as he tries to get Baez to expand. Baez with an opportunity to be a game changer here with a couple of men on base. To go two seamer in there and Roxton pulled it across the plate. Actually, it might have been in the strike zone, but Mesoraco had to reach back the other way for it. Two two is on the way home and another foul. Look at the hanging slider. That fastball clocked at 95 miles an hour. I haven't seen Broxton up around there in a while. To get there routinely with the Dodgers, sometimes more like 97, 98. Might be dealing with a little bit of a hot gun here tonight. Did the right thing. He had to make sure it wasn't going to be caught. So he will score. Potlin is in, and it's a ball game. Six to four on the two-run double by Baez. Some of the line drives he's hit has been have been as impressive as those towering home runs. This ball is absolutely crushed. This thing gets through the infield in no time. Watch Cozart. We got no chance. Well, Javier needed that for a very rough start to this series. And the tying runs at the plate. Six to four now. Castro takes ball one. So four runs allowed by Latos and seven plus. The line ultimately won't look as good as he really pitched. Uh, as you said, he he was on his game tonight. It will not be a quality start officially. High drive to center. Hamilton on the back pedal over his head. Baez to third. It's a very long single for Castro. How does he end up at first base on that ball? Hmm. So they're at the corners with nobody out. That's four straight hits to start the inning. How do you hit a home run? Man, you got to run. Well, and he's a tying run. It just, yeah, no excuse for that. Here's Valbuena. Has become a, a really bad habit that he has not been able to break. Remember that conversation we were having earlier about leadership and talking yeah. to him? You know, that's, that's one of his teammates needs to needs to jump him. 
double play depth here. Up the middle as Valbuena fouls out of play off of third. Fireballing a roll as Chapman is up. Ball in the air that'll get out of play. Six to four. Single by the pinch hitter Watkins. Coglin then singled. Baez doubled to drive in two. Castro with a long single. Paused by Broxton, and he struck him out. Foul tip on a fastball. One away. Is that free pizza? Eleven strikeouts. Yeah, yeah. Deal. Yeah. yeah. It's a big strikeout for the Reds, but more importantly for the fans, it's, it's free pizza. Solaire, one for three in his debut. Ball one. Homer, a pop out and a strikeout. Hit in the left, six to five. Jorge Soler has knocked in a couple in his debut, and they're within a run. Probably should have been tied. Boy, it looks good in the box. Pretty simple approach. See the uh, the, you know, the swing of Baez, with the big long swing. Of much simpler approach by Solaire. Strike one. Five hits here in the eighth inning. Cubs had five in the game in the first seven.
Castillo one out of three tonight. He struck out a couple of times after a solid single first time up. He was 0 for 4 with three strikeouts in the ball game last night. Matt Latos watching it all slip away here. Not all of it, not yet, but one swing away from losing his win, perhaps. Two strikes on Castillo. Here's the pitch. He pops it up, but again, not much foul territory here, and Frazier will just watch it drop. Good hitters park. The shutout last night. The Cubs pitched a fairly rare event here at Great American Ballpark. All jumps pretty good, especially on a hot, humid night in the summertime. You don't get many hot humid nights in the winter time. Almost never. Another 0 2. Almost hit him. Steel right now just in survival mode. And against Broxton is really laboring. He's faced four batters. He's given up three hits. Trying to figure out how they want to try to finish off Castillo here. I was wrong. I thought Mezzaraka was out of timeouts. Maybe he's using that final 20 here. to Phillips and they turn two to end the inning. The Cubs do get three but they're still down one here in the eighth.
Here we have our AT&T fan photo. You can tweet it to hashtag Northside fan photo. For a chance to have it appear in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Here's Zach Roscoe. Yeah, interesting situation for uh, the young left hander comes into this ball game. A high leverage situation now comes down just one run, bottom half of the eight. Uh, pinch hitter, and then the top, and it's going to be Chris Heisey. Zach, eight games, no wins, no losses, a 643 ERA. Chris Heisey against Ross Cup. Is he one of those rare guys early in his career became a really good pinch hitter. I guess it's one of those things that you're really good at it early. You don't want to get yeah. labeled as a pinch hitter. Yeah. But. You're never the leading man. You're always the uh, character actor, right? If you do it well, you can. Carve out a nice living for yourself. Spent a lot of time in the big leagues. There's not many do it well. Bruce and Botto will be talking and hitting. That is crushed. Chris Heisey with his ninth career pinch hit home run, as we just mentioned. He's really good at this role. Talking uh, with Ricky Renteria before the game about you know, utility guys who come off the bench and could be double switched in, could play a lot of different spots. You can say the same about a pinch hitter. You you really should be mentally exhausted at game's end, even if you don't play, because you're kind of managing along with your skipper to kind of understand when you need to be right ready to go. The manager doesn't, doesn't want to have to come and find you. You, you, know, you should know your role, the situations that you might be used in. Manager wants to look down that dugout bench and see you with your batting helmet, your gloves on, your bat in your hand, ready to go. Well, that was his third pinch hit home run this year. He was nine out of 34 in the pinch prior to that at bat. Hamilton changed his mind three times while that pitch was on its way to the plate. I'm butting. I'm not knowing. Yes. This is Hamilton's first 50 steal season since 1898. <laughs> Sliding Billy. Yeah. I guess if your name is Billy Hamilton, you're really, really fast. Just no such thing as a slow Billy Hamilton. Yep. If your last name is Hamilton and you give birth to a son, name him Billy. Nice oh, play, nice. Baleka. Yeah, with his speed, that's an easy double, maybe more. So Larry, so Larry excuse me, was cheating that way a little bit, so he might have been able to. Cut it off had it gotten by Valeka. But either way, he would have been two bases. Nice play by Chris. Valuable guy. Play all over. Solid defender. Well, that's it for Ross Cup. It'll be Justin Grimm when we return seven to five Reds.
July, he's really turned things around, but much better in the second half of the season. 276 ERA since the All Star break, uh, 457 prior to in August, a buck 59. He has faced 40 batters this month. He's allowed seven hits, one walk, struck out 10. Turned of what you would probably qualify as a disappointing season into a very positive one with this this, this run here of late. The good things from Justin Grimm, primarily because the command of the fastball and the breaking stuff has just been that much sharper. Expect any sort of residual effect from the last time we were here, but remember, our oldest Chapman, in the Cubs dugout, kind of got into it, and eventually the benches cleared near the Reds dugout. Rizzo and Chapman were jawing at one another. And we expect to see Chapman in the ninth with the Reds leading here late. Rounder to short. Two down. Brandon Phillips. And if you uh, joined us late, Anthony Rizzo not in the lineup tonight. He's day to day is a little bit of a back strain. Seven on that one from Grimm. Maybe it's a hot gun. Yeah, I think it is a little bit hot. I could have probably gotten 84 tonight. I don't, didn't pitch in the air when they flashed the, the radar gun readings up on the board for everybody to see. That would have been humiliating. We prefer just to kind of <laughs> fly below the keep radar. It, keep it among friends. Yeah. No pun intended. Time between pitches tonight. Very pensive. Well, not that Chapman needs a hot gun, but sense here if they tweaked it a little bit. Oh yeah, sure yeah. So get the 103s yeah. and get everybody excited. Yeah. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. So it will be Chapman in the ninth with his team leading seven to five.
Post Game Live presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield. Get the recap of tonight's game and all the action around the league. Don't miss Cubs Post Game Live tonight right after the ball game on Comcast Sportsnet. Last time we were here, tempers flared. Remember the Cubs had lost the first four games against the Reds. They did win this one, but Anthony Rizzo got into it with a roll as Chapman. Remember uh, Nate Scherholz? Yeah. Threw a couple of, threw a couple of buzz Nate's tower, and that got everybody's attention in the Cubs dugout, and they were screaming at Chapman, and Anthony Rizzo primarily up on top of the dugout step. And Chapman kind of with some dismissive body language towards the Cubs dugout after he finished off the inning, and then Rizzo went out to his position. Somebody in the, in the Reds dugout popped off, and Anthony kind of went all Willie Horton on him, threw down his club, and challenged the Reds dugout. A lot of pushing, a lot of shoving. One thing you have to realize if you're Aroldis Chapman, if, you know, there was no intent when he threw those pitches up around the head of Nate Sherald, but when you throw 100 miles an hour and you do throw one up around somebody's head, you're going to get everybody's attention and you're going to get yelled at, and you're better off just leaving that alone instead of re reacting to it. Right. Now, Contra from the right side, 100 miles an hour <laughs> in the dirt. So Mezzarocco wins a little bit. Effortless 99 on the gun and a strike. Chapman had almost a year long stretch. Ball line to left and down as Schumacher will cut it off. Alcantara with a leadoff single. 49 consecutive appearances, August 21st of last year through August 13th this year, he recorded at least one strikeout. A new major league record for strikeouts in consecutive games by a reliever in the modern era. Streak ended in Colorado on the 15th of this month. 3 2 win. No hits in the ninth, but got a line out double play. Well, Laka in on the hands at 101. 27 saves. He's failed to convert just twice. He's allowed 12 earned runs this year. Eight of those have come in. Two outings. He gave a four against Toronto in two thirds of an inning back in June, and then had a similar outing. Well, actually, gave up four without recording an out. Uh, four appearances ago in Colorado against the Rockies. Breaking ball there, 88 mile an hour slider. There's a lot of hard throwers in the game now. A lot of late inning relievers that throw 95 plus, but he somewhat unique how often he's up over 100. We got him. You can draw an analogy to, to being in traffic. There are a lot of guys that fly by you. And you go, man, that guy's going fast. Chapman's the guy that goes by you and you go, what was that?
There's Matt Caesar pinch hitting. According to Fangraphs, his average fastball this year has been 100.3 miles per hour. It's crazy. That's crazy talk. Two balls and a strike. Caesar might have been vulnerable to heading back to Iowa with. Jorge Soler coming up. But then uh, Justin Ruggiano and Ryan Sweeney with leg issues, so both went to the DL today. Two balls, two strikes. Alcantara, the runner at first. His run doesn't matter. Two guys at the plate. And that's out number two. Another final chance. It's Coglin. Yeah, that's probably that that big league moment for a guy like Matt Caesar. Go. Okay, that's a little different yeah, than what yeah, I uh, used to see. I haven't seen much of this coming up through the minor leagues. Battle time for Coglin with Baez on deck. I really want to see Chapman and Baez. Mm -hmm. so let's see if Coglin can work a base here. Now, Contra will take second. He will not be credited with a steal. Left-handed hitters hitting 121 off Chapman this year. He's only faced 36 of them. Managers try to stay away from a lefty matchup against Chapman if possible. Coglin making a late bid for our all gum chewing team. Two and one. Well, now he's gloating, he's popping bubbles. I imagine the chew rate increases when you're facing Chapman. Ball three, but well, it's easier to sit up here than yeah. to have to face it and not check your swing on 99. Yeah. And if you're going to try to get to 99, you got to cheat a little bit. You got to get it started early. Two on your radio dial. In this instance, down two runs. The walk every bit as good as a base hit.
Good job. There we go. Oh, this is fun. Javier Baez against Aroldis Chapman. The hardest thrower in the league against the hardest swinger. He gets the head out in front of one of these fastballs. It might go 490 feet. It kind of feels like there are two choices here of all the things that can happen in a bat. The signs seem to point to two <laughs> possible outcomes. I don't even have to say yeah. what they are. So here we go. Strike one. That's where you have your best chance against Chapman is to you know, get one of those fastballs down a little bit when it's up above the hands. Really tough to get to. High deep drive. Hamilton's gonna have room. Oh man! He just missed it, and the ball game ends. The Reds hang on, seven five. The final. Oh, that was close. Yeah, it sure was, boy. He just missed it. Just got under it a little bit, and got on the backside from Chapman. Pretty good battle there. Two strikes. Bias just misses delivering a three run home run. Well, Chapman just, he thought he had given up a go ahead three run homer. He didn't even want to look at first. Our GMC professional grade player of the game. Is Jorge Soler. What a debut. How about that? Yep. First big league at bat. Crushes one.